Hey everyone, this is Dr. Mark Hyman. Welcome to my weekly house call, your chance to ask me your questions. And this week's question is, Dr. Hyman, for generations my family has been overweight or obese, and I'm just wondering how much of weight gain is dictated by my genes. Can my genes make me fat? Well, this is a great question, and yes, there are genes that cause obesity, but only in a very few rare conditions. On the other hand, many of us have genes that predispose us to obesity and type 2 diabetes, but predisposition is not predestiny. In fact, a comprehensive study on genes and obesity found that there were 32 different genes identified that could contribute to obesity. But even if you had all 32 genes, it would account only for 22 pounds of extra weight. But there are a few caveats. If you have a family history of obesity or of type 2 diabetes, or you are of Asian, East Indian, Native American, Pacific Islander, or Middle Eastern descent, you are much more likely to be carbohydrate intolerant. A little bit of sugar or starch, and you start making way more insulin than the average person. And that starts you on a vicious cycle of weight gain, hunger, and fatigue. The good news is that by eating well and by exercising, you can completely prevent obesity or type 2 diabetes. For example, 80% of the Pima Indians in Arizona who switch from their traditional diets to flour and sugar and Crisco have type 2 diabetes. And yet their cousins in Mexico, same genes, maintain their traditional diet and their lifestyle and are thin and have no diabetes. The truth is that some of us are well designed to store excess food whenever it's available. It's called the thrifty gene hypothesis. Now, there are also other genes that play a role in weight. They are brain genes. In the brain, there are genes that code for receptors for dopamine. That's the pleasure producing neurotransmitter. Now, some of these genes make the dopamine receptors not as responsive to the pleasure signals that are provided by the dopamine. Now, many drugs of abuse, including cocaine and heroin, also trigger these dopamine receptors. And sugar and refined carbs are actually the most abundant drug of abuse. They trigger these same dopamine receptors. Now, when your dopamine receptors need more stimulation to feel pleasure, it predisposes you to cravings and addiction. We know that sugar acts just like cocaine and drives food addiction and overeating. And I've described this in great detail in the Blood Sugar Solution 10-Day Detox Diet, and I provided a clear plan to break sugar and carb addictions. Other genetic factors also play a role. Just as different people have varying responses to carbs, so they have different responses to fats. This is really new and exciting research. Some do better with more omega-3 fats, some do better with saturated fats, and some better with more omega-6 fats. There can be a big difference in how your body responds to different fats and how they affect your blood sugar, your cholesterol, and even your gut bacteria. The best doctor in the house to listen to is your own body. Listen to that wise doctor who will give you direct and immediate feedback about what works and what doesn't. Now, most people who are carbohydrate intolerant do better with a high fat diet and a lower carb diet, but not everyone. Some need more carbs and good ones or less fat. How do you feel? What does the scale show? How are your lab tests? All of that will help identify what's best for you. If you're a type 2 diabetic trying to reverse disease, you may need up to 50 or 60 or even 70% fat and only 5 or 10% carbs. Now, this is an extreme diet, but it's often needed to reverse disease. Benjamin Franklin said an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, and sometimes people need a pound of cure. So once disease is reversed, your body becomes more resilient and more able to handle wider varieties of food. This is called metabolic degrees of freedom. So yes, everyone is different. And what works for you might not work for your friend and vice versa, but everyone can at least start with a few basic things to get them on the right track toward weight loss and optimal health. Focus on eating real whole foods and healthy fats and limit or avoid processed sugars and refined carbs. And when I say eat real food and healthy fats, I mean plenty of non-starchy veggies and some fruits if you can tolerate it, clean grass-fed meats and things like avocados, coconut oil, nuts and seeds, and wild fish. And make sure you get adequate sleep. Sleep deprivation makes you fat, and it leads to depression and pain and heart disease and diabetes and much more. Getting proper sleep can literally change your health. And also exercise and move your body. You can't exercise your way out of a bad diet, but exercise makes your cells and your muscles more sensitive to insulin. So you don't need as much insulin, and you don't have to have it, and less insulin means less belly fat. Also, don't stress about your genes. Your lifestyle and food choices are better indicators of your health and weight than your genes are. So no matter who you are, 
You can create optimal health and weight and metabolism and even reverse most chronic diseases. Some have to work a bit harder, for some it's easier, but it's possible for almost everyone. Now, if you like this video, be sure to share it with your friends and family on Twitter and Facebook and submit your questions to Dr. Hyman so next week, maybe I'll make a house call to you. Mm -hmm.